Hi everyone. So this is going to be a video that is going to teach you a breakdown of one of our favorite hip hop moves. I'm going to be putting out these videos all week. Um, we're going to do some ballet ones, we're going to do a stretching one, and we're going to do some fun things that'll get kids up moving, parents up moving with their kids. Uh, and it's going to be great. So I have partnered with someone called Chris Zondaflex. He's Mr. Chris Hip Hop on Instagram and uh, Twitter, I believe. And he makes some awesome music for kids. They're lyric dance along videos. He does hip hop, he has tap, he has ballet, he has learning songs, and we use them all the time in the studio. They're great for warm up. They're great to create to. Um, and he has let me or giving me permission rather to share it all with you so that you can do the moves along with us. Now the moves that we're gonna do today, I do in the studio all the time. If your child has come for a hip hop class or a workshop or anything like that, chances are that they probably know the moves to this dance. So this video is kind of for the parents, but it'll get you up and moving with your kids. And if they've talked about a dance and you're like, I don't understand what that is, it's this video. So we are gonna be dancing to a song called the Catfish Dance today. And the Catfish Dance is silly and funky and great. And I'm gonna show you the album artwork right now. Um, underneath this video, I'm gonna have the links in YouTube. I'll have the links for Spotify, which is what I use for all of my music. And I'll be sharing a Spotify playlist for all of you with all of our, uh, with all of the music we'll be, um, moving to this week too, and those links will go out to you. Um, but this is what the music, the artwork looks like. It's from his Mr. Chris Hip Hop Dance Moves album. And it has a lot of the songs that we dance to all the time on it. It's on Spotify. Um, I believe it's on lots of different platforms, so you should be able to find it. And let's get started. So this move, I'm... <laughs> As I'm sure all of you are, we're all working from home and uh, right now everyone in my house is portioned into the, like rooms where they're working. So hopefully you can see me as best as possible. Um, you don't actually need a ton of space for this dance as long as you can stand and kind of get your arms up and down, you're good. So this move, dance is called the catfish dance. I don't know why it's called the catfish dance. It's a nice silly name for it and it always gets a giggle, but it starts with a hip hop posture. So as a ballet dancer myself, I always tell kids my number one advice when I was learning hip hop was bend your knees, bend your knees. Don't stand up so tall, bend your knees. When we stand in ballet, we stand up nice and tall, long neck, shoulders down. And in hip hop, we can bend those knees and get low to the ground. So if you ever doing the move and thinking it doesn't quite feel right, it doesn't quite look right, it's because your knees aren't bent. So we're gonna start, arms crossed, lean, and a little bend, and we'll nod along to the music. It's got a nice slow beat, it's pretty easy to find. And then the lyrics start, and the first lyric is, give me that catfish, knock on the door. I don't know why you really want the catfish. You could make up a whole story about why you happen to want someone's catfish. <laughs> but you are going to be stepping and scooping with your arm. So first we practice the arm. I'm going to use my right arm. You can mirror me. Whatever works for you. I'm not too worried about direction that you're going. Just getting the moves down. So you are going to take your arm and scoop away from your body. Like you're saying, get out. It's not a, everyone come in, move with me. Scoop out, just practice that a few times. Go out and out. And once you feel good about that, you can bend your knees when you do it and get your head involved. Boom, boom, boom. The lower you can bend your knees, the more of a workout it is and the more it'll ease you into your next move. Now, we're gonna scoop out, and now as we scoop out, we're gonna add the legs. You're going to just take a step to the side. The tricky part here is that your leg and your arm are going opposite directions. I'm stepping this way, and I'm pushing with my hand that way. The number one thing I see is people stepping and scooping the same way, and that's not what you're looking for. You wanna really get that cross motion 
where your body's going two different directions. Okay, so you're gonna step and scoop, and that's what we do for the words, give me that catfish. We step, give me that, and you bring it in, catfish. Let's try it together, ready? We go, give me that catfish. Excellent, one more time. Five, six, seven, eight, give me that catfish. Awesome, then we knock on the door. And this is what I always tell kids. It's not a polite, hello, I'm your neighbor knock. It's a hip hop knock. Our knees are bending and we're gonna work on contracting and expanding our rib cage up here. When I expand it, I open it nice and wide, as big as I can possibly get it. And when I contract it, I sink my body in, I curl up, I make it nice and small. If you do yoga, think of cat and cow. So when you knock, it's not a tap, tap, tap. It's a bang, bang. And from the side, you see, expand, contract, contract. My knees are bending. My rib cage is gathering in. So all together, it's going to look like this. Give me that catfish, knock on the door. Boom, boom. The bigger you can move your arm for those two knocks, the better. So all together, we do it to the right and we do it to the left. So it goes, give me that catfish, knock on the door. Then our knocking hand becomes our scooping hand and we go the other way. Give me that catfish, knock on the door. I'm doing pretty small steps so I can stay in my video frame here and not <laughs> bump into anything, but feel free to take nice large steps when you do that. Boom. And get nice and low. Boom. 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 Okay, I'm gonna put on the music. You can try that with the music and then we'll add on. Here we go. Okay. Five, six, get your hand ready. And that's it. Now, it gets, it gets a little sillier from here and I'm gonna go through all of these moves so you have the moves and then you can practice with the music at home. I'll play it once through at the end and you'll be all set. But now you have an idea of what we're working with. Okay, so we go, give me that catfish, knock on the door. Give me that catfish, knock on the door. Then it says, press that cookie dough. For whatever reason, we're eating our cookies before we eat our dinner. What a crazy world we live in. So you're going to imagine that the whole floor that you are standing on is cookie dough. It can be whatever type of cookies you want it to be. Sometimes it's fun to think of what type. You're gonna take your hand, you're gonna make it nice and flat. You're gonna bend those knees. Both hands are gonna be needed for this. You're gonna bend your knees and you're gonna pretend you're flattening cookie dough to the front. Press and press. And it's really important that when you press, you go down and you come all the way back up. Press that cookie dough. Get that squatted. Press that cookie dough. Now, for the really little guys, for my preschool class, the first couple of times we do it, we just do it to the front. Press that cookie dough, press that cookie dough. Four presses, right, left, right, left. For parents, kids who are a little bit older, we do two presses to, presses to the front and then two presses to the back. So it goes, press that cookie dough, then behind you, press that cookie dough. It's a pattern, front, front, back, back, my knees, do the same thing every time. Press, 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 press. And I really reinforce that we want that lean to the front, to the back. It's subtle, but it's there. Now, one of the things we talk about in dance all the time is that when I tell you to plie in ballet or to bend in hip hop, I so rarely mean bend like this. We're not tipping our whole body over. We're using our plie, we're using our knee bend to get to the floor. We're not using our hinge. So when you press, you gotta bend. Of course you're reaching a little bit, but your legs are taking you down, not your body. Bend, 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 bend. Awesome. So after we, give me that catfish, knock on the door. Give me that catfish, knock on the door. We press and press and press and press. 
I uh, switch which hand I use first because sometimes I'm teaching in a mirror and sometimes I'm teaching mirroring kids. Again, I'm not worried about which hand you use first as long as you do four presses. Press that cookie dough, press that cookie dough. After that, we squeeze it and we munch it. And this just gets a little bit silly. Now there's all kinds of different choreography you can do for this part. This is what I find works the best in the studio. So after I press my cookie dough, I squeeze it. And again, we're gonna work on that contraction and expansion. These ribs, this upper body is really gonna get a workout. If you squeeze right in here, you'll get a nice ab workout too. Use your core muscles, use your stomach muscles to bring those ribs in. And you'll notice a little feeling right in there. So as we squeeze it, we take our arms and you do them one over another. Like you're wringing a washcloth, like you're squeezing Play-Doh. The bigger you can make it, the better. But of course, little squeezes are fine too, as long as your body's moving along with them. So we press our cookie dough, press that cookie dough, then it says squeeze it, squeeze it. You take a big breath, out, squeeze it, squeeze it. And you bring your contraction in on the word squeeze. Squeeze it, squeeze it. And I wanna see that big down, up, down. That's where the drama comes in. That's where those levels come in. Up, down, up, down. From the beginning, it is, give me that catfish, knock on the door. Give me that catfish, knock on the door. Press that cookie dough, press that cookie dough. Squeeze it, squeeze it. And then it is munch it, munch it. And this is the chance where you get to eat the floor cookies that you've made. Um, normally I tell kids, channel your inner cookie monster and munch it up. It's also a chance for you to take a breath. If you've been really giving it, you can squeeze it, squeeze it, and then munch it, munch it. You can bend down low. You can make a scary face. Whatever year you want. You've got four counts. Could just be silly. After you munch it, munch it, we are moving on to pizza. Okay, let's try the beginning with the music again, I think, and with the cookie part, and then we'll move on to the pizza part, and then that's it. So let's see. The beginning starts with a nice moment, and you can get your hands ready. Ready? Here we go. Give me that. Press it low. Down, 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 down. Squeeze, squeeze. Munch it, munch it. Listen, we're going to flatten some pizza. All right. Cookie dough, we've got it. If you need to, go back in the video and do that three times, four times. All the good stuff, as much as you need to do it. Again, kids, you've probably done this with me before, so you know what's going next, but help your parents. Make sure they know what's going on. Okay, after you press your cookie dough and you squeeze it and you munch it, our floor is turning into pizza. Again, great time to imagine what do you like on your pizza? What kind of pizza are you making? All that good stuff. What kind of toppings would you put on it? But for now, our arms are going to become pizza tools. It says we have to flatten our pizza and then slice it. And it's got the same rhythm. Press that cookie dough, press that cookie dough, squeeze it, squeeze it, munch it, munch it, flatten that pizza, flatten that pizza. Okay, our hands become pizza tools. And we are gonna be working on turning our whole body and this is again one of the hardest parts of the dance just for the littles. We really work on the body awareness. It's not the same as pressing that cookie dough. My legs are not staying forward. I'm gonna turn my body, boop, so my knees are facing the wall. They are bent. My hand is gonna come down and I'm gonna flatten that pizza. Now, check yourself. This is not it. That is a lazy spaghetti arm. You have to take your hand and use force. Flatten that pizza. Kind of like you're going to high five the floor. You're not really touching the floor. That's as far down as I'm going. About to my knee. But I'm bending. Flatten that pizza. Then I'm going to turn very quickly the other way. Flatten that pizza. Let's practice that a few times. 
flatten that pizza. Flatten that pizza. Again, <laughs> shake your legs a little bit. Get your pizza tools out. We flatten that pizza. Flatten that pizza. Very good. My body's still playing pretty tall, but my knees are really doing all the work. After we flatten our pizza, we have to slice it up. Our tool is going to go from a flattening tool to a slicing tool. This is a great chance to work on strength. One of the things I talk to kids about all the time is that you are stronger than you think you are. Use those arm muscles. Lazy arms have no place. You can squeeze your muscles and slice a pizza without dangly arms and dangly elbows. So after we flatten our pizza, we slice it. You turn your body again and you slice it, slice it, and then you turn the other way, slice it, slice it. I'm engaging my arm muscles. My knees are bent the whole time and I'm slicing. All together, it's flatten that pizza, flatten that pizza, slice it, slice it, slice it, slice it. The slices get fast. You wanna make sure you get in two nice slices. It's not as many as you can, as fast as you can, two really good ones. Slice it, slice it, slice it, slice it. Then we're at the end of the dance. We put our hands on our knees and hands to the sky. After we're slicing, our body is facing the side. You're gonna bring your body around and put your hands on your knees, very easy. Hands on your knees. This is a chance for you to bend that body over and reach your knees. I like to put my hands facing in. Just get your hands to your knees. Then we're gonna scoop our hands up to the sky. It's not hands on your knees. Throw them up as fast as you can. Hands on your knees. You're gonna take your fingers and scoop up. And as you scoop, your body's gonna follow. Ooh. Okay? Try not to stand straight up. Try to really feel that height difference. We're low, we scoop high. Amazing, and as you scoop, I have a bit of the ceiling up here that I'm gonna try not to touch, but you wanna kind of imagine that you're touching a ceiling. Flat hands all the way up, because we're gonna raise the roof. It goes hands on your knees and hands to the sky. Then it says, everybody, let's do it one more time. For my little guys, we stay on the spot and we just raise the roof. One, two, three, Four. For people with a little more coordination who've done it before, who can move around, we take it in a circle. And we go hands on our knees, hands to the sky. Everybody, let's do it one more time. You get four steps, four raises to get right back because then it loops in again. Give me that catfish, knock on the door. Whew. That's a lot. That's a lot of information for you. But what I'm gonna do right now is remind you again that this is a video. You can go back, you can watch it as many times as you want. Practice the little pieces of choreography. Practice it with your kids. I'm gonna put on the music. I'm gonna do the whole dance all the way through. I'm gonna give you some suggestions for games, activities that you can do with this dance. And then we'll be all done. Starting from the beginning, a great thing to do is a hip hop pose. I tell kids that they can have whatever kind of performance face they want. And this is something we talk about from the first day of dance class, right? Your face is important when you dance. It guides your audience as to what they are supposed to be feeling about your dance. If you come out dancing with a sad face, the audience isn't gonna know what's going on. Or if you come out dancing with a confused face, they're going to think you don't know what you're doing. We really practice performing with a smile or in hip hop. We can use the hip hop face, which is attitude. It always gets some excellent faces. Starting with a hip hop pose. A pose is something that's frozen. I tell kids you can start with your hands out. Hands crossed is always a good one. One hand ready to dance. Every now and then we get some robots. But it has to be a hip hop pose. It's not posing like an animal. It's not posing like a rock star. It's posing ready to dance. However you wanna start is up to you. We're gonna do the whole song through. That means it's that whole routine two times. Here we go. All right. I hope you can hear it well enough and if you can't hear it very well, 
The link for the song will be right underneath so you can play along with it. Press it down, 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 down. Squeeze it, squeeze it. Flatten that pizza. Slice it up. Hands on your knees. Scoop. One, two, here we go. Big knot. Then we press it down. Squeeze it, squeeze it. Munch it. Slice it up. Hands on your knees. One, two, three, four. And you end again with a pose. Awesome. Play that back. Dance along with me as many times as you need to and have some fun. One thing that I usually do after I teach dances like this is play a game called audiences and performers, or that's what we call it. It's where you take half the class, I never tell them which, half the class sits down and is the audience. This is where we talk about good listening skills. You sit, your lips are closed, your eyes are on the performers at the end of a performance. You clap and cheer for performers who have tried their very best and you have to think of your favorite part of the dance. It's not something you think the dancer could do better. It's the thing that you liked that the dancers did. So whether it was the slicing part, or the raise the roof part, or the give me that catfish knock on the door part, whichever part you like best, that's the audience's job. The dancer's job is to do the dance and try their very best. You could do kids performing for grown-ups, you could do grown-ups performing for kids, you could do boys versus girls, you could do siblings. Um, siblings and siblings give everyone a chance to perform a little bit. It's also a great uh, chance for you to add costumes, put on a funky hat, and a cool sweater if you have fish or catfish themed clothes it might be a good opportunity I don't have any of those but if you have some of those a costume can go a long way make videos post your videos send me your videos send me your pictures I love to see you up moving home and all of the information for the song for mr. Chris's hip-hop will be in the link underneath we're gonna be doing two more of his um, songs this week. Tomorrow I'm going to be doing a stretching video so we'll go through our typical stretch routine so you can get up and stretch with your kids. Kids you can stretch along. We're going to do some of our favorite stretches that we do. Um, and then we'll be doing another hip-hop video. I'm going to do a ballet basics. We'll go through positions of the feet, positions of the arms, some of our basic ballet stuff so you can do some ballet at home. And then uh, next week we'll get into some cool choreography. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments, email me, Instagram, shiningstars.to. Let me know what you want to see. Let me know if this is helpful. Let me know if you have any problems at all. Have a good day.